Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning, fundamentals and applications. Up till now I have been discussing about the concept of supervised learning techniques. Now I will be discussing the concept of unsupervised techniques. Today I am going to discuss one important concept that is uh, the Gaussian mixer model and the expectation maximization algorithm. In most of the engineering and other applications like in signal processing, communication, machine learning and many other applications, we consider a Gaussian distribution for representing a data distribution. That means a particular data distribution can be approximated by a Gaussian distribution. It has many advantages. So, one advantage is that Gaussian distribution is very closer to the natural distribution. That is the first advantage. Another important point is the mathematical manipulations for Gaussian function is easy. So, if I want to determine the derivative of a Gaussian function, it is easy to determine this derivative. I can determine the nth order uh, derivative of a Gaussian function. Like this, there are many advantages of considering a Gaussian function. In case of a complex data set or maybe the distribution, it is not possible to represent this data set by a single Gaussian. So, for this I have to consider multiple Gaussians that means the mixture of Gaussians. So, for a complex data distribution, it is not possible to represent the distribution by a single Gaussian. We have to consider multiple Gaussians and that is the mixture of Gaussians. Now, in case of a Gaussian distribution uh, or in case of the Gaussian density, I have two parameters. One is the mean, another one is the variance. If I consider the multidimensional case, one is the mean vector and another parameter is the covariance matrix. So, these parameters I can determine by some estimation techniques like maximum likelihood estimation technique I can apply to determine the or to estimate the values of the parameters, the mean vector and the covariance matrix. In case of a Gaussian mixer model, I cannot apply the maximum likelihood estimation technique because it cannot give a close form of solution. So, for this I have to apply some iterative algorithm and one algorithm is very popular algorithm is expectation maximization algorithm. So, in this class I will be discussing first the concept of the Gaussian distribution that is the Gaussian density and after this I will be discussing the concept of mixer model that is the Gaussian mixer model and after this to determine the values of the parameters I will show one iterative algorithm that is the expectation maximization algorithm. So, let us begin this class. So, GMM that is the Gaussian mixer model using EM, EM means the expectation maximization technique. So, first let us consider a Gaussian distribution. So, it is, it is the one dimensional distribution. So, this density the Gaussian density I can write like this. It has two parameters one is the mean another one is the variance. So, it is 1 by twice pi sigma square e to the power minus x minus mu whole square 2 sigma square. So, this is the univariate Gaussian density. If I consider the multivariate normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution that I can write like this and x is a vector and I am considering the mean vector and the covariance matrix this concept already I have explained in my previous classes. So, two twice pi d by 2. So, what is d? d is the dimension of the vector x. The 
exponential so this is the expression for the multivariate density the multivariate normal density so we need to estimate the parameters of a distribution and for this we can consider the maximum likelihood estimation so this is a very this is a very popular estimation technique so we may consider the maximum likelihood estimation technique So in this case, I want to show you, suppose I have some data points. So this distribution, I can represent by a Gaussian function. That means by a Gaussian distribution. So if I consider this one, that is nothing but the Gaussian distribution. If I consider the multidimensional case, uh, I may get this type of ellipse. And this is the centroid. That means it is the mean of this Gaussian. So that means this data distribution is represented by a Gaussian uh, distribution or Gaussian function. So now how to determine the values of the parameters. So already I told you we have to apply the ML technique, the maximum likelihood estimation technique. So move to the next slide. So what we need to consider the log of Gaussian distribution we have to consider in case of the maximum likelihood estimation and take the derivative and equate it to 0. So, what I need to consider log of Gaussian distribution first I have to take this one after this take the derivative and equate it to 0 so after this I will be getting the, uh, the values of the parameters so mathematically I can write like this I am taking the log of this density function x mu sigma minus d by 2 ln twice pi this expression already I have explained in my discussion of Bayesian decision theory So we are taking the log of the Gaussian distribution and after this I have to take the derivative uh, with respect to the parameter mu and equating it to 0 and for the another parameter that is the covariance matrix again I am taking the derivative. with respect to the covariance matrix and equating it to 0. So corresponding to this one, I will be getting the mean, the estimated mean by the maximum likelihood estimation technique. So that is 1 by n summation n is equal to 1 to n. So we have n number of samples or the data points x n and corresponding to this one. I have the estimate for the covariance matrix. So 1 by n summation n is equal to 1 to n x n mu n
so I have the estimate for the covariance matrix. So here n is nothing but number of samples or data points. So this is about uh, this is about a Gaussian distribution and how to determine the or how to estimate the values of the parameters. Now let us discuss about the Gaussian mixer model. So why actually we need a mixer model that concept I am going to explain in my next slide. So why actually we need a mixer model. Suppose I have some data points, these are the data sample points so we are considering this data set so this data distribution it is not possible to represent by a single Gaussian that means I cannot consider a single Gaussian distribution to represent this data distribution. So we have to consider multiple Gaussians. In this case we may consider three Gaussians to represent the data distribution. So maybe we can consider this all these points we can consider this will be one cluster and this cluster can be represented by one Gaussian. Similarly, I may consider all these data points. These data points or this data distribution can be represented by another Gaussian. So, this is one Gaussian and similarly the last one if I consider all this data distribution data points that can be also represented by another Gaussian. So, three Gaussians I can consider. So, that means I will be getting this one so this will be one Gaussian so this Gaussian approximate this data distribution I have another Gaussian so all these are data points corresponding to the second Gaussian and I have another Gaussian so these are the data this, this data distribution is represented by the third Gaussian so this is number 1 Gaussian 1 number 2 and number 3 so 3 Gaussians we are considering so we have 3 clusters so we can also represent like this so this is one cluster this is another cluster this is another cluster so three clusters we can consider so these are actually the iso contours so that means the distance from the mean is same for the iso contours that is the mohalanobis distance is same for all the iso contours so we are getting uh, three Gaussians, Gaussian 1, Gaussian 2, Gaussian 3 and that is the mixer model. That means the entire data distribution is represented by a mixer model, the mixer of three Gaussians. So in one dimension also we can show this one. So in one dimension suppose, how to show this one? So first suppose 
I have these data points. So corresponding to this data point, I can consider one Gaussian. Next, I have these data points. Corresponding to this distribution, I can consider another Gaussian. Maybe I can consider another Gaussian for this green color data points. So in 1D, I can show like this. So you can see uh, that is the concept of the mixer model. So in this case, I am giving one example here. Here I am showing two Gaussians. The first is represented by F naught X and X 2 2. So that is the first one. The first one is it is shown by the black color. So the first one is this is the first Gaussian number one Gaussian. And in this case, the mean is 2 and the variance is, you can see, it is 2. And the second function, Gaussian function is F1x. So for this, I can show uh, the Gaussian is the blue color. So the second Gaussian is number 2 Gaussian. And that is represented by the Gaussian function F1x. And you can see the mean is 10 for this Gaussian. And if you see the red one, that is actually the combination of these two. The red one is the combination of these two. The red one is nothing but it is 1 plus 2. So we have to consider the linear superposition of Gaussians. So this red one is nothing but the linear superposition of these two Gaussians. So this is one example of a Gaussian mixer model. So how to represent it mathematically? So move to the next slide. So suppose this Gaussian mixer model ZMAM, how to represent mathematically? This density I can represent like this because uh, the mixer model is nothing but the linear superposition of Gaussians. So pi 1 f 1 x plus pi 2 f 2 x plus pi k f k x. So, here k means we are considering k number of Gaussians. So, what is mixer model? The mixer model is the weighted sum of the mixers of the PDFs where the weights are determined by a distribution. The distribution is pi. That means I can say the mixer model is nothing but the linear superposition of Gaussians. So here the mixing coefficient, the mixing coefficient that is the weight k is equal to 1 to capital K pi k pi k is equal to 1. So this can be written like this summation k is equal to 1 to k pi k pi pi is nothing but the mixing coefficient pi is nothing but the mixing coefficient f k x so this expression i can write in this form and if i consider this f1 x that is nothing but the gaussian density that is the normal density this density i can write like this pi 1 normal density so it is x mu 1 sigma 1 i am not giving the vector sign here mu 1 is nothing but a vector but i am not giving the vector sign so like this i can consider number of gaussians so k number of capital K number of Gaussians I can consider. K number of Gaussians we are considering. So actually this expression also I can write like this. 
so in this case the mixing coefficient the mixing coefficient is pi k so mixing coefficient pi k so this small k it is from 1 to capital k so k number of gaussians we are considering and finally this expression i can write in this form this is the mixer mixer of gaussian So, this is nothing but the mixer model. In this case, we are considering k number of Gaussians. So, now uh, we have to discuss the concept of the expectation maximization algorithm because in case of the GMM that is the mixer model, I cannot apply maximum likelihood estimation technique to estimate the values of the parameters because I will not be getting the close form of the solution. So, let us move to the next slide. So, now we are discussing uh, this GMM, the Gaussian mixer model. So, from the previous slide, how actually we are representing the density, we are representing like this summation k is equal to 1 to capital K, k number of Gaussian, this is the weight, that is the mixing coefficient. and we are considering k number of Gaussians. I am not giving the vector sign. This x is a vector, mu is also a vector. So, from the previous slide I can show like this. So, in this expression, this k is nothing but it represents number of Gaussians. this pi k it represents mixing coefficients or I can say weights mixing coefficients or weights and we have to consider some conditions that means we have to consider this normalization and also another condition is positivity. So, these conditions I can write like this the pi k that is the mixing coefficient lies between 0 and 1 and this k it is from 1 to k pi k is equal to 1. So, suppose if I want to determine the log likelihood, how to determine the log likelihood of this. So, this log likelihood also I can determine in maximum likelihood estimation we determine the log likelihood. In this case also I am determining the log likelihood. So, you can see here I have three parameters one is mean, one is the covariance matrix, another one is the mixing coefficient. So, three parameters we are considering mean. So, you can see these three parameters I am considering mean, covariance matrix and the mixing coefficient. Summation n is equal to 1 to n ln I can write like this and this expression it is equal to just putting the values of this density ln k is equal to 1 to k pi k n just putting the value of this density.
so this is the log likelihood so this ml technique i cannot apply in this case because uh, there is no close form solution so these parameters can be calculated by considering em algorithm so move to the next slide so we can think of the mixing coefficient as prior probabilities for the components so this sentence i can better to write so we we can think of mixing coefficient as prior probabilities for the components so for a given value of x we can evaluate the corresponding posterior probabilities and which is called the responsibilities so in the em algorithm we are defining one uh, term that is the responsibilities responsibilities that means for a given value of x we can evaluate the corresponding posterior probabilities and that is the responsibility so from the base rule uh, we are considering this gamma k x that is the responsibility and this is actually the latent variable we are considering so by applying the base rule you can see i can write like this probability of k given x that is the posterior probability probability of k that is the class prior probability of k is the class prior probability of x given k that is the class conditional density or this probability of x given k that is the class conditional probability divided by probability of x that is the unconditional prior so that's the unconditional prior so this is by using the base rule so we can determine the posterior probability probability of x given x we can determine uh, with the help of this uh, this formula so now this class conditional density i can write as a mixture of gaussian that means what we are considering this class conditional density we are considering considering as a mixture of gaussian and if i consider this denominator we are considering the summation of all the gaussians so z is equal to 1 to k k number of gaussians by z n x mu z sigma z that is nothing but summation of all the gaussians we are considering so here pi k is nothing but n k divided by n so here n k is nothing but number of points assigned to cluster k and capital n is nothing but total number of sample points all the data points so in case of the expectation maximization algorithm uh, this term is very important the term is the responsibility so we can determine the responsibility like this this em algorithm that is actually the iterative optimization technique 
which is operated locally. So, let us move to this slide. So, this expectation maximization algorithm that is the iterative optimization technique which is operated locally. So, expectation maximization algorithm this is the iterative optimization technique. So, in the figure you can see uh, this is the iterative technique we are uh, we are applying. So, you can see uh, that we have initial point and after successive iterations we are getting the optimal point. So, the final optimal point I am getting after successive iterations. So, in this iterations there are two steps one is the estimation step another one is the maximization step. So, in the EM algorithm I have two steps one is the estimation step estimation step. So, in the estimation step what I need to do for given parameter values we can compute the expected values of the latent variable. That is nothing but the responsibilities that is the expectation step. Next one is the maximization step. So, in the maximization step update the parameters of the model based on the latent variable calculated using ML method. So, this latent variable is nothing but the responsibility. So, update the parameters of the model. So, what are the parameters of the model? The parameters of the model already I told you I have uh, the parameter is the mean, one is the covariance matrix and another one is the mixing coefficients. So, these are the parameters of the model. So, these are the parameters. So, the parameters of the models are mean, covariance matrix and the mixing coefficient. So, first I have to determine the latent variable. First I have to determine the latent variable and after this update the parameters of the model based on the latent variable calculated using ML method. So, that is the concept of the expectation maximization algorithm. So, now uh, let us write the algorithm that is the expectation maximization algorithm for the GMM. So, EM algorithm for GMM Gaussian mixer model. So, I want to summarize this algorithm. The first step is number 1 initialize the means mu j covariance matrix sigma j and the mixing coefficient 
पाइजे सो इवालुएट द इनिशियल भेलू भेलुस बाय लाइकलीहुड So one technique is randomly we can select uh, these values. So initial initialize means initially we can select randomly the random values of these parameters. And suppose if I consider a data set or the data distribution, so I may consider the mean of this entire data distribution as the initial guess or initial value. That also I can consider. But one technique is randomly also we can consider the values of these parameters initially. After considering this initialization, we have to go for the E step, that is the expectation step. What is E step? We have to evaluate responsibilities. using the current parameter values so this is the latent variable already i told you this responsibility i can determine like this this derivation i have not discussed in this class and this can be also derived so how to get this expression so this responsibility i can determine like this so we are considering capital k number of gaussians So this is the expression for the responsibility. So we can evaluate responsibilities using the current parameter values. So this is the second step. After this, move to the next step. That is the third step. That is the M step. That is the maximization step. Re-estimate. the parameters using the current responsibilities. Re-estimate the parameters using the current responsibilities. So parameters are mean, mean vector, n is equal to 1 to n, the responsibility is gamma j, so this expression also it can be derived but I have not shown the derivation. This is the expression for the mean. The expression for the covariance matrix. And finally, I can determine the mixing coefficient that is 1 by n. So, 
So, these three parameters I can determine from the responsibilities. So, all these three parameters I can determine from the responsibilities. And finally, uh, I have to converge. So, the final step I have to go for the convergence. So, move to the final step. So, for this what we are considering for the convergence for testing the convergence of this algorithm because this is the iterative algorithm. So, evaluate log likelihood. I have three parameters mean covariance matrix and the mixing coefficient. So, n is equal to 1 to n, n number of data points and we are considering capital K number of Gaussians. So, we can determine the log likelihood. If there is there is no convergence, return to step 2. So, how to actually determine the convergence? Suppose I can consider the parameters mean covariance matrix and the mixing coefficient in two successive uh, iterations if there is not much changes of these values of these parameters that means i can stop the uh, algorithm i am repeating this i can determine the mean i can determine the covariance i can determine the resp uh, i can determine the mixing coefficients from the responsibilities and in two successive iterations if there is no significant changes of the values of these parameters, then I can stop the algorithm. That is the condition for convergence. Another way also I can do, I can evaluate this log likelihood. Here you can see I am evaluating the log likelihood. So, in two successive iterations, if there is not much changes of this log likelihood value, then also I can stop the algorithm. That is the condition for the convergence. So, the based on the parameter values, I can take a decision and based on the log likelihood, also I can take a decision. So, when to stop the algorithm? So, because this is the iterative algorithm. So, let us now consider one illustration of the expectation maximization algorithm. In this figure, you can see I am showing a data distribution. So, these are data points, distribution of data and with the help of single Gaussian it is not possible to approximate this data distribution. So, that is why we have to consider number of Gaussians. In this case I am considering two Gaussians, one is the red color, another one is the blue color Gaussian clusters and suppose this is the initial position of these two Gaussians, one is the blue, another one is the red and all the data points I have shown as a as green color data points. So, move to the next slide here you can see some of the points data points are assigned to the blue cluster that is you can see some of these data points are assigned to this that is the blue colored Gaussian and some of the data points are assigned to the, the red colored Gaussian. So, this is the initial assignment. So, here you can see this is the L is equal to 1 means this is the first iteration after doing this you can see I am getting these two new Gaussians because I am assigning the uh, some of the data points to the blue colored Gaussian and some of the data points are assigned to the red colored Gaussian and after this assignment I am having these two Gaussians after the first iteration. In the iteration number 2 you can see the position of these two Gaussians in the data set. So, in the entire data distribution you can see the position of these two Gaussians after the second iterations. In the fifth iteration you can see the position of these two Gaussians, one is the blue colored Gaussian, another one is the red colored Gaussian. 
and after 28 iteration you can see the final position of these two Gaussians. So, this blue color Gaussian can approximate this all these data points that is all this data distribution and the red color Gaussian can uh, approximate all these data points. So, that means by considering these two Gaussians I can approximate this entire data distribution. So, after this iteration I will be getting the convergence because not much changes in the values of the parameters. The parameters are already I told you the mean vector covariance matrix and the mixing coefficients. So, based on this I can determine the convergence condition that is I can stop the algorithm. So, all the steps here I am showing together uh, already I have explained. So, initially I have shown two Gaussians and after this after the first iteration you can see the position of these Gaussians. After the second iterations you can see the position of these Gaussians like this after the 20th iterations you can see the position of these Gaussians and after this I can stop the iteration, I can stop the algorithm. So, this is the concept of the mixer model and this is the concept of the expectation maximization algorithm. So, one application of this algorithm I can show here. So, this is applied in computer vision, this computer vision application is uh, we can consider the segmentation problem that is the segmentation of foreground and the background that is also called the background modeling and another one is the tracking. So, so the tracking of the object or the tracking in this case I am considering the tracking of a leaf and in this case you can see suppose corresponding to this video if I consider a this particular pixel or these pixels because in a particular video I have number of frames and this pixel values the distribution of this pixel values I can represent by a mixture of Gaussian. Similarly, in the second case also if I consider this point or any, any one of the points the pixel values because I have number of frames in the video. So, the distribution of this pixel values I can represent by a mixture of Gaussian and based on this I can develop a background modeling algorithm or maybe the tracking algorithm I can consider. So, this is one application of Gaussian mixer model in case of computer vision application. So, one is the background modeling another one is the tracking. So, here you can see uh, I am playing this video and you can see just I am doing the segmentation separation of the foreground and the background and in this case for a particular pixel we are considering the Gaussian mixer model the mixer of Gaussians because single Gaussian cannot approximate the pixel distribution the pixel value distributions. Similarly, in the second case also I can play this video this is the tracking in this case also uh, we have to consider the mixer model the Gaussian mixer model. So, in this class I discuss the concept of the mixer model that is the Gaussian mixer model and why this Gaussian mixer model is important for approximating a data set or a data distribution that concept I have explained. After this I explain what is the problem of uh, the maximum likelihood estimation to determine the values of the parameters in case of the mixer model the Gaussian mixer model because I will not get the close form of the solution. So, that is why I have to consider the iterative algorithm that is the expectation maximization algorithm. In the expectation maximization algorithm first I have to determine the responsibility and after this with the help of this responsibility I can determine the values of the parameters and this is the iterative algorithm and after this based on some conditions I can stop the algorithm that is the convergence. So, maybe I can consider the parameter values the parameter means the mean covariance matrix and the mixing coefficient and based on this I can stop the algorithm. In two successive iterations if there is not much changes in the values of the parameters then based on this I can stop the algorithm. Also I can consider the log likelihood also for the convergence. In two successive iterations 
if there is not much changes of the log likelihood value then based on this I can stop the algorithm. So, this is one important discussion the discussion of the, that is the discussion on Gaussian mixture model and the expectation maximization algorithm. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.